On today's episode of Mahjong Nosh and Such, I'm going to make Southwest Egg Rolls. Doesn't that look beautiful? Look at that yumminess. This is my favorite appetizer at a particular restaurant that's very popular nationwide. It's got a really big pepper on the front. Am I allowed to say restaurants and such? All right, anyway, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. So Southwest egg rolls, love them. So I'm gonna try to make them at home. I Googled a recipe and I think I found a good one. There are a lot of ingredients. So bear with me and I'll tell you what they are. We have a little bit of oil and then the veggies are two tablespoons of chopped green onion. We have two tablespoons of chopped or diced, I guess you, I should say, uh, red pepper. We have two tablespoons of jalapeno. And I left about, I don't know, six seeds in there, something like that. Then we have a third a cup of corn, a quarter cup of black beans, two tablespoons of chopped spinach, a cup of chicken. Now the recipe calls for chicken breast. It's actually a half of a chicken breast cooked and diced, but I like chicken thighs. So I have here chicken thighs chopped up and I basically uh, drizzled olive oil over it and then I sprinkled some Southwest seasoning on it. You know, cumin, taco seasoning kind of stuff. So just whatever your favorite Southwest seasoning is, use that for your chicken. And then I baked it at 375 for about 20 minutes and I flipped the chicken breast halfway through. And then I just diced it up and that's what you see here. We have a little bit of Southwest seasoning. Again, use whatever you want. You can use a taco mix or you can use a fajita mix. You could use separate um, um, spices like cumin and chili powder, etc. I also have, uh, oh, so there's two teaspoons there. I also have a teaspoon of parsley and a little bit of salt. Then we have five tortillas here. So here's how this is gonna go down. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to saute the peppers and the onions. Then I'll add the chicken and then I'll add everything else except the cheese and I'll cook it for about five minutes. After I cook it for five minutes, I'll add the cheese and then we'll wrap the egg rolls. Once the egg rolls are wrapped, we freeze it for four hours. And then after they've been frozen, we're gonna deep fry them. If you're on a diet or if you don't eat fried foods, then this probably isn't the recipe for you, but I'm telling you right now, these are really good. So here we go, we're gonna get to cooking. That smells really good already. I'm sure that we just need to cook it until it's maybe softened a little bit, but those green onions are pretty delicate. So if you cook them too long, they're gonna not be so good. So just cook them until they're so the red peppers are soft. I'm going to add the chicken. Okay, next, the veggies. Oh, jalapeno. Spinach.
spices. So we're going to cook it for five minutes. It looks a little dry, so I'm going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil in there. It smells really good and it's pretty. It looks just like it does when I have this at the restaurant. Almost time to take it off. Here it is. It smells really good. And I think five minutes is might be too long. Either that or I needed more olive oil. So I think uh, next time maybe I'll use a little more olive oil or maybe turn the heat down. I think I might have had it a little high. Nothing is burned though. All right, I think it'll be just fine the way it is. So I'm gonna put in the cheese. Mmm, what do you think? It looks like Tex-Mex. So next, we need to soften the tortillas. And what the instructions say to do is get a damp towel. So here's a damp towel. I just kind of ran it under the water and squeezed it out. And you put the tortillas in there. and nuke it for about one minute. I'm just gonna go 30 seconds. They're already pretty soft, they're fresh tortillas. So we're just gonna keep it in this nice warm towel. And now we'll roll. So I'll take one. Now I've never done this before. And I'm not really good at rolling tortillas, so we'll see how this goes. So it says to take equal scoops. Let me see, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pre-scoop the filling and divide it. Make sure that there's enough for five. Maybe like two scoops per egg roll. So there's one. So this is going to take a minute, so I'll speed this up. One, two, three, four. Ooh, good thing I did that because this one is going to be short. So we need to borrow. So it's a little less than one of these big these scoops. I'm not sure how big this scoop is. Maybe a third of a cup. So. You might want to pre-divide your, your filling out to make sure that it's fairly equal. So let's get to filling and rolling. It's definitely cheesy. Okay, so I'm going to put it on the front half, roll in the sides, roll over that first half and kind of press the filling towards me so that I can make a nice tight roll. And then I'm gonna roll it. There we go. That looks pretty good. Then, we're gonna secure it with a toothpick. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'll put it on the baking sheet and we're gonna do that four more times.
Very nice. Here they are, ready for the freezer. Got to cover them first with some saran wrap. You know what? I am going to just do it so that they're covered like so. Because this is a non-stick pan, the saran wrap is not going to stick to this pan. So I'll just make sure that the egg rolls are covered. So those will be in the freezer for four hours. And then I will get out my deep fryer, which we got for Christmas this year. And it's been a lot of fun using it. So I'll show it to you in just a little bit. We just have to wait for four hours. I don't think you want to wait with me for four hours, so I'll cut to the chase. The egg rolls have been in the freezer for four hours. I just took them out and they're still quite frozen. They're starting to thaw just a little bit. So the next step is to deep fry them. If you don't have a deep fryer, just use a pan and follow best practices. Just be very careful. I decided that uh, we would get a fryer. It just seems safer and cleaner. So I'll leave information for the fryer that I'm using. I really do like it. And it seems to be working well for us. And it's been a, a really clean process each time we've used it because of the kind that I ended up getting. So again, I'll leave information below about it. So I'm going to get the basket and put in, I think I'm just going to do three. I, I probably could do all five, but I want to make sure there's room and I'm still learning how to use it. So I'm just going to do three. And then I always put this lid on as I put it in there and that way I don't get any splatter on myself. So I have this set to 375. Here we go. We're going to let this fry for 10 minutes. There's the beeper. So let's take these out. I'm happy to report they did not burn. They don't look exactly like they do at the restaurant. They're a little fatter, but we'll see what they taste like. There's one. I gotta get the other two out of the freezer. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it, but that's how I do it. Okay, so while that's cooking, we'll make the dip. These look pretty good, I think. They stayed intact, which I'm very happy about. We'll cut into one in just a little bit. We'll let that cool. Five minutes is up. I'm going to flip them. And now let's make the dip. I need eight ounces of sour cream. The recipe calls for a 16 ounce package of ranch dressing. I don't use the packets, but I do have ranch in a bottle. So I'm just going to put in a shot of ranch. I don't have a one ounce measuring cup. And I know that this is one and a half ounces. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. 
something like that. Just make it work. Okay, yeah. That doesn't work. I'm just making a big mess. Okay. All right, now, that's that. We're gonna put in a little bit of garlic. It said a quarter teaspoon. Since I'm halving this, I'm gonna put in an eighth of a teaspoon, so I'll put in half of this. That's plenty. It also says to use some celery seed, but I'm out. So I'm not gonna put in celery seed. And now, uh, ooh, we have to put in, it says three quarter teaspoon of hot sauce. This is sir, sir, sriracha, sriracha. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. So here we go. One two, three. And I'm just gonna mix this up. That's a lot of dip for two people. Now, I'm gonna take an avocado and mash this up and mix it in. I don't want it to be too chunky, so I'm gonna slice it up pretty good here. Be really careful if this is how you do it, because that knife can go onto the other side and into your hand. So be careful. And now the second half, slice super thin. Let's see how I'm doing that. And now the other way. And now scoop it out. All right, now I'm going to mash it up with a fork. You could probably use a potato masher with this. That would work really good to you. All right, I think that's good. Now I'm gonna put it into a smaller dish. It looks like green goddess dressing. I wonder if you can use that green goddess dressing instead of making it. I suppose if you wanted it to be from your pantry, you could do that. There it is. Okay, did I forget to put on the timer? I did. Oh boy. I think these are done. I'm pretty sure it's been five minutes. I'm gonna take these out. It smells like fried food. We'll just let that cool there. And then this, I'm going to turn off. So that will cool. Once that's cool, I'll go, it'll go through this filtering system into the bottom receptacle. You see that down there? 
that holds the oil to the next time you use it. It's a pretty cool system. Okay, we're gonna let these cool. They're still pretty hot. So we'll let these cool and then we'll, we'll plate them and then we'll have a taste. They've been cooling for a while. Let's cut into one and see what it looks like on the inside. I'm just gonna cut it at an angle, kind of like they do at the restaurant. I don't want to smoosh it. Okay, let's see. It looks like it does at the restaurant. It's maybe just a little bit bigger, but not by too much. Maybe next time, let's see here. Maybe next time I'll do the smaller tortillas. I'm gonna cut into the rest of them. This one's a little dark and the toothpick is kind of embedded. There we go. Okay. I don't want to smash it. I'm going to saw. Ooh, look at that. Mmm, -hmm. it smells really nice. It smells really quite like it does at the restaurant. Let's see here, how do I want to do this? Okay, we'll figure out presentation in a minute. I'm going to take out this one. Mmm-hmm. Crunchy. They're crunchy. Oh, that's kind of cool. I think I'll do it like that. What do you think of that? Does that look like fun? I think it looks fantastic. I would totally go after this at a party. I'd probably have to have more than just one. I think this is how I would plate it. I kind of turned them around a little bit so you could see all the pretty colors. And I have one to taste. So let's go in for a taste. They look just like they do from the restaurant. I think I'll take a bite without the dip first. Yum. It tastes almost just like it. Now let's try the dip and see. It's a little greasy, but it's tasty. Mmm. It tastes just like it does from the restaurant. This is a good recipe. I like it. And that sriracha sauce mm, comes out just a little bit. There's a little bit of bite, but the coolness of the ranch and the avocado, perfect. It's very, very good. Give this recipe a try. I think it's a keeper. Mm-hmm. I forgot napkins again. Very good. I 
think this would be a great recipe for mahjong nosh. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, consider subscribing. And then don't forget to click that bell so you get notification for when I post new videos. That way you won't miss out on any more recipes for your next mahjong event. Between now and the next episode of Mahjong Nosh and Such, may all your picks be keepers. I'm going to have another bite. Mm-hmm. Very good.